83 AD, the opening day of a new series of games that Emperor Domitian promises will be dazzling. The headline, the most extravagant beast hunt Rome has ever seen. The beast hunts were much more than just fighting animals. It was a way to demonstrate Roman control over the entire world, both the human world and also the natural world. Domitian really wanted to demonstrate that he, in fact, was master of all. Domitian is a real contrast to his brother and father. While his father, Vespasian, had been a bluff man of the people, and Titus had been charming and suave, Domitian was all harsh edges. From Domitian's perspective, to follow his father Vespasian, his elder brother Titus, that was a difficult act in terms of military prowess and in terms of their popularity. So Domitian had to strike out in a different direction to win the goodwill of the Roman people. He decides to use the power of the Colosseum by putting on the greatest show that anyone had ever seen. At the center of this deadly spectacle, one man, a famed beast master, or bestiarius, charged with facing 20 wild beasts, one after the other. Most of them weren't successful long enough for us to learn their name. But there was one beast master that the poet Marshall mentions. His name is Harpophorus. To have caught the attention of a poet of Marshall's caliber, the fight must have been incredible. Beast masters were enslaved people. And so therefore, they were also a display of Roman domination over the people subjected by the Roman Empire. These games will be bigger, bolder, and better than anything Rome has ever witnessed. The emperor has requested one beast master to be the main event of the morning opening, a fight with 20 beasts, one after another. The man Rome demands is... Carpophorus. There was rivalry between opposing beast masters. After all, there was glory, fame, and potential freedom at stake. We have evidence of this in cursed tablets that were found in the amphitheater in Carthage. The cursed tablets contain spells and magical symbols that were meant to evoke the help of demons to harm rival beastmasters. Kill, destroy, and wound Gallicus at his hour in the ring of the amphitheater. It's a very cutthroat industry, and obviously everybody's vying for that one spot. It's a very narcissistic sport. And what we know is that they really hated each other in certain moments, or in treating the gods to do nasty things to other beast hunters. Bind Gallicus, the son of Prima. Let the bear crush him and wound him. I'm sorry, my friend. The gods will decide our fate now. The commencement of the games was a major deal for the city of Rome. These took place on holidays. A great portion of the population would have had the day off. I think it's impossible to overstate the kind of excitement and energy of a crowd that's been pent up to see blood. The buzz would have been building for months by the time at least 50,000 people made their way to the Colosseum and packed themselves in. You can imagine for someone like Harkonnes, beneath the floor of the amphitheater and waiting for his turn to go up and fight these 20 beasts. This is an opportunity of a lifetime. You can imagine the stink of fear, the smell of wild animals. Everything is ready to go. You can hear the buzz of the crowd above. 
there's almost like a religious aspect to the lion. He's this revered animal, much as the eagle was to the Romans. He's, he's the top predator. He's the, the top of the food chain. And that, for the Romans, is a representation of, of Rome. The lion has always been a symbol of strength and ferocity in many ancient societies. They appeared in the palaces of Babylonian kings and in the court of Alexander the Great. But what the Romans do is they import lions in their thousands. So this is the Romans, as ever, trying to go one step further than the civilization that went before them. So they're saying, it's not just that we can kill lions, it's that we can mass slaughter the most ferocious and powerful creature that Mother Nature has to offer. for Carpophoros. It's an epic achievement that, sure enough, has made his name live down in history. Perhaps by his victory and accomplishments, Carpophoros actually challenged the very foundations of Roman society. Here was an enslaved person who actually elevated himself as a hero and, in victory, became a symbol to the Roman people of success.